We'll get on that. We got a lot to get into today, and obviously, the last couple of days, Lance, your name has come up because of Jack Evans, who saw, I guess, a tweet that you made, and then he was upset, and for those that don't know, because, I mean, some of us don't bother going on Twitter ever. <laughs> the smart ones. <laughs> what what happened? What did you say, and then what did he say, and then what would you respond? Well, there was a, a clip I saw shared online. I had no idea it was Jack Evans in it. But it was a two guys on a look like a small indie show, and basically, I assume it was Jack that took it because he seems to be the the uh, the guy that's built of rubber and can live through anything. He took a superplex to the hardwood floor, and I just commented, "This reminds me of my favorite quote in wrestling," and it's a quote I think Bret Hart made in the '90s. I think he was actually you know talking about the ECW crew of my generation, but I mentioned the quote of you know. We used to work very light and almost not touch anybody. The fans thought it was real, so we called them marks. Now people legitimately beat the living hell out of each other, and the fans think it's fake. Who are the marks now? And I didn't read all of Jack's response because it was like, you know, six or eight long tweets, and he seemed quite angry, and I'm like, all right, whatever. I actually responded to him after I thought it was just the one tweet, and then I saw the thread. But... Again, he and many others, I saw many fan responses that thought it was, you know, me doing the, my generation was better, your generation is bad. And I'm like, that's not what this is about. And again, to be, you know, fair, it's like Brett said it about my generation. And I agree with it. And, and the, the, the backlash, if there is such a thing, it's not that big of a deal, but many of the fans, it's like, it's the standard what about ism of tribalism where it's like, well, yeah, but there was people that hurt each other in your generation. It's like, yeah, there's people that hurt everybody in every generation. But it doesn't change that I believe that that quote is actually really great advice as a philosophy that, again, we, as a, you know, general rule, at least especially when I broke in, like when we tied up, like when I first worked with Johnny Smith, it's like, it was almost like we tried to tie up and not make contact. Like we'd have a air cushion between our hands and the guy's trap and his elbow. And we worked very light. And there was many, at least back then, that believed it was real. And again, we were working them. And then again, when Brett made the comment, I don't know who specifically he was directed at, but again, I would certainly think ECW and the Attitude Era was the intended target. There was a definite period in time where once we, you know, the collective we of the industry admitted that what we were doing was, you know, fake for lack of a different term, people started working stiffer. And ECW in, partic in particular was of that in the Attitude Era as well with the, well, we'll prove to them that we're really tough. And it's like guys were legitimately taking hard chair shots and stupid bumps. And I think at that point, it is very appropriate to ask the question, who are the marks now? And even if you want to just say fans rather than marks, because some people get their, you know, their, their backup with the term. But I think at this stage in the game, everyone uses it um, indiscriminately for the word fan. Like even I just oh, I'm a big mark for Marvel. I'm a big mark for books. But who are the fans and who are you doing this for? And I think, again, you know, ECW was a, 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 a big violator of it. I have been at times. <clears throat> of doing things in matches that a aren't healthy or are stupid for the sake of proving something to yourself or doing it for yourself. And it's like, if you're doing ungodly bumps that are going to hurt you or working really stiff with each other to either prove something to yourself, prove something to the boys, it's like, then you're doing it for yourselves. Therefore you are the audience. You're the marks. Not to use the derogatory term for Mark, but you are the fan base. And that's where, when I first heard Brett say that, and again, it was probably generated at me and my generation, probably me less than others in ECW, but still, you know, I'm guilty of it too. To me, it hit me at home going, man, he's right. I need to be smarter. And I think if everyone, be you the current generation, my generation, the one in between, the one behind everyone before doing anything especially anything that could potentially cause injury to yourself or others really think about 
who this is for and is the audience that pay, is paying for it, be it either, you know, viewers tuning into television, people buying tickets, are they the ones you're doing it for? Are they your audience? And if you are doing it to prove that I can take a good stiff hard chair shot because I'm tough, it's like, well, then you're doing it to impress yourself. You're the mark. And if you're doing it to impress the audience or you think that it's going to better your career, but it's like, then fine, then you aren't the mark. And I think, too, that was the subtlety to the quote on why I like it. It doesn't finish with, so now you're the mark. It asks that question. What is your motivation? Who is the audience you're trying to work, for lack of a different term? And if that audience that you're trying to work isn't the paying customers, well, then who are the marks? And unfortunately, it became the, oh, you think your generation's better than ours. People got hurt in your generation. It's like, yeah, there's dumbasses in every generation. And the whole crux of the quote is, hey, everybody, let's be smarter and safer, especially in an era where the fans don't think it's real anyway. Like running my school, I had far too many i found it shocking people that would ask it's like well how are the chairs gimmicks so that they dent when you hit the people in the head they just assumed they were fake chairs and so many students that come through it's like oh hey just teach me how to do the shooting star press onto the concrete that'll be cool it's like well you realize that's gonna hurt right and they're like what that they just think oh it's all fake you just do it and it's like if fans don't think anything hurts, why are we doing stuff that hurts? And again, I've spoken out about it, you know, many times on this. It's like the absurdity of a the amount of bumps people take on the floor now or on the apron. It's like, oh, the fans will know it really hurts. It's like, yeah, because it does. What are we doing? And I was I forget who I was talking to, where if you remember back in the old WWF days when they had the blue rings that everyone talks about how ungodly stiff they were. And if you watch, you can tell they have almost no give. And guys had, you know, horrible injuries and pain pill addictions and all kinds of stuff from bumping in these god-awful rings. And they finally convinced Vince to get better, softer rings. Yeah. So now we're bumping on the floor in the apron. And after, it's like, after he uh, got into that ring. But again, Fuck, we, this thing's hard. we made the ring safer, so now everybody's going where it's not safe anymore. Well, if I and may jump like, in for a moment, Lance, sure. I, w I would just like to say that it is abundantly clear to me, having wrestled and having worked with wrestlers and having watched wrestling for a long time, every generation is going to selectively do certain things in a safe way, and they're going to, for whatever reason, do things in a dangerous way as well. And the example would be, no matter what Bret Hart says, when Bret Hart first broke into wrestling, the promotion that he was working for his, for his father employed a guy called the Dynamite Kid who would do a headbutt off the fucking post to the floor, okay? Mm -hmm. That's not safe, brother. Like, it doesn't matter. Whatever Brett's saying about what guys do today and taking a superplex off the, the top to the floor outside, Dynamite was doing crazy shit off the post to the floor in the early 80s. You can go back further than that. Harley Race was taking crazy bumps on the floor. But, of course, there were other things that were done in that generation that were, in fact, fake. Like you said, locking up where you don't even touch the other guy. Pulling the guy down by the hair where you're not even actually touching his hair. Working light, but at the same time, certain guys would do other things that were not safe. I mean, the lightest guy I ever got in the ring with times a thousand was Buddy. He would never touch you. He would chop you very hard. If you were out in front of the people, he would give you a forearm to the back with the flat part of his forearm on the thick part of your back. It was loud. It hurt you. But, like, he wanted to really make contact because he was right there by the people. But as safe and as light as he was, for whatever reason, he had it in him, probably because he loved Bobby Eaton and he loved Ric Flair, that we would be in a high school gym and he would take a fucking backdrop and land on the hardwood. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Same thing. You probably, like, you watch ECW and, you know, a lot of people look at it and it's like garbage guys, no gear, blah, blah, blah. But a lot of those guys... When you stripped away their gimmicks or whatever, they knew how to work. But they ended up in a promotion where a badge of honor or whatever you want to call it was hitting each other in the head really hard with a fucking chair. It's just like the wrestlers who would uh, shoot themselves up with steroids 
but they would claim to be clean and drug free because they weren't shooting heroin. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's like, Mm -hmm. it's selective. So when I watch AEW, for example, I have never asked, I doubt they would tell me, I'm 99% sure that that ramp is basically, it's a gimmicked ramp, okay? It has to be. It's either got a thick layer of foam or it's the old gymnastic ski floor. It's something. I believe this fully. But, I think it's got the same padding that WWE's floor around ringside has. Sure, it's whatever. Got something. It's not like a hard, solid ramp. There, there's a gimmick to the ramp. When Cody took that chair shot very early on in AEW from I think it was Sean Spears or whoever. Yeah, it was supposed like, to be. That actually was the chair that your students ask you about. It was a gimmicked chair. I, I don't know exactly, but it was like they 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 created a chair where the seat of it, if you would actually sit in it, you would go right through because it, it was so thin. The problem was it <laughs> folded it around his hair head to such a degree that it actually cut the shit out of him. But the idea was they wanted to fool you, and they had a gimmick. So my point is there are a lot of things in AEW they do that they're trying to make it safer. However... I watch that show every week, and somebody takes some sort of suplex onto their head. And I'm sure that right now it feels fine to them, but I can tell you that down the road, it's not going to feel fine when they're 40 and when they're 50 and they're 60. It's every generation. Oh, and it's a mess tonight. Oh, good, good, good. Big, big mess. Uh Uh-huh. I've got so much junk here, I don't know what I'm doing. Brian versus Reigns. That was WrestleMania 6, 1990. No, it wasn't. No, it was not at all. Warrior versus Hogan. No, how fitting. Both very tan. (laughs) Start out. I've been laughing at myself on the show. I don't know if I'm laughing at myself or with myself. Who cares? You're laughing. Well, it's What difference does it make? Well, it makes me feel kind of (laughs) stupid. What? Like I'm doing something dumb. Granny, do you personally agree that Brian is on the genius level of intelligence? Of course I am. I don't think so. (laughs) Why? What evidence evidence do you have, Granny, that I'm not a genius? Oh, I've got Besides the first uh, ten minutes of this show. We used to do the twist and the polka and the hip-hop and uh, there was one other Excuse me, the (laughs) hip-hop? Yeah, hip-hop. Really? Granny did hip-hop. Huh. Yeah. You learn something new every day. No, I don't. Sounds like you're a grandmaster instead I of a grandmother. My phone's ringing. You, can't, you don't say. <laughs> Who's calling? I'll just let it ring. I will wait. Yeah. It's probably my brother. It doesn't say on the screen who's calling. I haven't looked. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.